Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today. Bruce and I are going to talk about education, and I think we'll see quite a few parallels with what Dr. Leach was saying um, about the importance of collaborating to make sure that people are aware of the specific context for uh, service families. The SKIP Alliance, the Service Children's Progression Alliance, is a collaborative alliance of cross-sector partners across the UK, and we're working together to make sure that the promise of the Armed Forces Covenant that was taught, that has been talked about today um, is actually realised for all children of serving personnel and veterans. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Alliance UK-wide, and then Bruce is going to briefly talk about um, what he's doing to lead collaborative work in London. I'd just like to show you our theory of change, how we identify the need, how we go about working together uh, to, to address it. Service children, like all children, are unique individuals. Uh, they can benefit from the experiences that they have as part of a serving family, um, but there are also impacts. As Dr. Leach experienced, he said at the beginning, lots of families, as you know, move repeatedly, and that complex interplay of mobility, separation, parental deployment, transition, means that they do have a very specific um, experience. And you can see how we've talked about it there. We work with the practitioners, with the professionals who work with these young people. And we did a large consultation last year that showed that most professionals are really crying out for being linked up with each other and also evidence-based ways of working with service children. Our response to this is one of partnership. And our national partnership means that research activity responds directly to the priorities of those working to improve things for service children. Dr. Leach mentioned GP training, and again, this, that's the kind of thing we've been doing, is working, for example, to make sure that teachers fully understand the context of uh, serving families. And we work together to spread and inform research and also, for example, we're working collaborative, collaboratively across the UK to design a toolkit for schools to use with, their, with supporting service children. And that partnership approach means that our collective resource can be more effectively deployed. We have a very small staff team based at the University of Winchester. There's three of us, but we're effectively 1.1 people. So how we want to make the impact across the country is through partnership and collaboration. And this shows some of the changes we've been able to make. We've also worked at a kind of policy level to make sure that the policy environment works for practitioners who are working with service children. So the, the bottom one, for example, the Office for Students is the body that regulates universities and they now recognize service children as a group of children that should be worked with by universities um, outreach teams and that's our whole theory of change the way we've defined the need based on evidence how we framed our response and the change that we believe we can have as a result before I hand over to Bruce to talk about the local context this is the main way that we do try to work together in support of service children's education. We've got a network of hubs across the UK, including London, um, and that those hubs feed into national activity and benefit from work on a national level. The chairs of our hubs have identified the value not only in the shared vision and the mutual support of this network, but also each of them is very different and there's very specific local contexts and local activities. So having just very quickly told you about the Alliance on the UK level, I'm going to hand over to Bruce to talk about what's going on in London. Thank you very much, Kath, for the, for the quick uh, whiz through there. Yes, so the Skip Alliance London Hub, we, we first met in uh, September 2018. Um, and it was a sort of, as Kath said, a, a collaboration between uh, the Royal British Legion out of our, um, out of our head office in London and uh, King's College London and some colleagues there. Both of us had attended um, a, a skip 
uh, conference and when this sort of hub network was talked about we thought oh hang on a minute why don't we try and kick something off in London seeing as we're both there and and interested in in advancing this work so I'm just going to talk through what we've been up to since then and hopefully how you can get involved and help out so our very first meeting, as like I said, September 2018, we had uh, 15 attendees all together. And um, there's a photograph there, which is uh, which those of us that, that made it to the end and stayed for a photograph. Since then, um, we've grown, and we now have over 50 different people um, so we class as members of the London Hub on our mailing list and attending our, our meetings and communicating with us through, through email and, and getting our getting our communications and taking part in our activities. Um, those members come from universities throughout London, from colleges, from schools, some local authorities, um, the Ministry of Defence, the Department for Education have been along, military charities, and all others that are interested in supporting uh, armed forces families and armed forces children in their education. The very first thing that we did as, uh, to, to sort of start this work was build relationships. Which is, which is why we've got, we started with a meeting, um, pulling together people that we think are interested in this work and that should be talking to one another and working with one another um, to, to advance this, this agenda. Um, as Kath said, the, the key part of, of all of this is, is the partnerships that we're building. So we started with 15 people, we've now got over 50, and we're, we're cracking on with some work. So after we've built those connections and built those relationships, we started to share the data and the resources that we have, and realizing that having lots of different people in a room together, coming at this from different angles, are all bringing um, different useful bits and pieces to the table. So one of the first things we did was share the um, Department for Education's data on service pupil premium recipients. It's, uh, it's publicly available, but a lot of the people that we gathered together um, hadn't seen it before, didn't know where to find it. So we started by using this data to try and map out where service children that we know about are located uh, across London. So, so a couple of interesting things came out of that which I've, I've put on the, on the chart on the slide there. Um, most notably the borough with the single largest number of service children is, is Hillingdon Borough, 32% of all of the London <coughs> service children that we know about located in, in one, uh, one London borough in, in Hillingdon. Followed um, then by the London Borough of Greenwich, which has 13% uh, of all of the, uh, all the service children in London. So those two boroughs there, out of, out of the 32 plus the city of London, have got 45% you know, of all of the service children that we know about in London, quite a, quite a chunk. But I suppose what's, what's interesting is the, the flip side to that is that the remaining um, chunk of service children uh, in London are spread across the, the remaining London boroughs. They're spread very thinly across the other, the other 30 uh, London boroughs. The City of London, incidentally, is one of the only, uh, one of two of the only uh, local authorities in England that has no service children um, claiming service people premium. So we started by sharing this, this information, which was quite useful for, for the people that were attending our hub events. If you're interested in finding that yourself, you can um, go on the Skip Alliance website. This was just put up in, uh, in December. They've taken all of the service people premium data from across England and put it into a really quite clever interactive map. So you can click on your local authority area and it will tell you how many pupils are claiming service people premium, um, how many schools that's spread across, et cetera, et cetera. Really very useful um, for you to have a look at that. So that was the, the data that we, that we shared with all of our participants and our members. Um, what we've then moved on to doing is sharing the, the resources and the, and the knowledge that everyone has. So there's just a few uh, quite interesting events listed on the slide there. Um, there was a really good day at uh, Kingston University back in, uh, in March 2019, where as part of their initial teacher training course, they had a half-day um, series of lectures um, on the armed forces community and uh, service children and the challenges they might face and how teachers to, should respond to that. So we had Skip Alliance London Hub members were invited along to that to present and to participate and gave us a, a wonderful opportunity to share what our members knew about supporting armed forces children and armed forces families with 
students of Kingston University who will be, well, they probably are now, teachers, the teachers of the future, starting, just starting their careers. So it's a fantastic opportunity for our hub members to be able to share their knowledge um, with people who will, will, if not now, will very soon be, uh, be teaching service children themselves. Uh, in June of that year, we, uh, we were invited along to RAF Northall to visit their, uh, visit their community centre and, uh, and, and meet their community team and some of the, some of the service families there. And that was a, a great opportunity for us to learn about what they do with the families that live, around, that live in Hillingdon around RAF Northall. And again, an opportunity for um, some of the members of the, of the Skip Hub to, to share their knowledge uh, with, uh, with RAF Northall and the community there. And uh, just in December of last year, we were, um, we were very delighted to welcome a new member, the organisation Inspiring Governance, which um, seeks to encourage people to become school governors. But the you know, seemingly not, not quite a, a, a relevant topic, but um, they're interested to get more members of the armed forces community involved in school governance, because that is a route to ensuring that schools, if you are a governor there, um, can take into account the needs of the armed forces community if you've got someone uh, on the Board of Governors who knows a bit about the subject and is interested on, on pushing forward that agenda. So that's another uh, member that's come on board and helped us by sharing their expertise and, uh, and what they can bring to the table. So we've built connections, we've got some, some members together, we're always growing, growing our, our, our membership list and our mailing list. We've started sharing data and sharing our resources uh, and now we're very, very keen to make um, a, a sort of a standard sort of uh, practice to share the, uh, the good practice and the good work that is going on across London from the various stakeholders that we've managed to pull together. So a few examples of that. Um, we visited, some of, the, some of the London Hub members visited uh, Glebe Primary School in Ickenham, which is uh, near RAF Northall, uh, and was a great chance for us to talk to um, teachers there who were working specifically with service children and again learn more about what they were doing to support service families and the children in their school who were, who were from a service family. We've, uh, we've been very, uh, very delighted to have had, um, been able to take a lot of, a lot of time um, from Brunel University in London who are extremely supportive of the armed forces community um, in terms of both the staff that they have there and their students as well. Um, they go to great pains to, um, to support those people. Um, they're also a, an Armed Forces Covenant signatory, uh, and I think now a Gold Employer Recognition Scheme award holder as well. So they're uh, working very hard to make sure that they provide the best support to the Armed Forces community that, um, in terms of the students that they teach and the staff that they employ. And we've also been, uh, been very pleased to, to have uh, spent a lot of time with the RAF Northall community team um, again, getting to learn about what it is that they do to support service families and hear from them, hear from service families themselves, the concerns that they have um, about their children uh, in, in school. So we've had, in just these three examples here, we've spoken to a school, we've spoken to a university, we're speaking to the armed forces community, and we're learning about what they're doing and sharing that good practice as widely as possible. We're allowing all of the London Hub members and all the people that participate in the London Hub to learn from these examples. And we're also sharing it all with the wider hub network that you saw in the slide earlier. So I'm hoping that the work that we're doing in London is proving to be useful to people in Scotland and people in Wales and people in other parts of England who have formed um, Skip Hubs and uh, also we're learning a lot from them as well. So this is not just about sharing work and practice in London, but nationally we're sharing our good practice and we're learning, uh, we're learning from each other. So what have we got planned for the future? Our next meeting is already set for uh, Friday the 19th of June. Um, we're being uh, hosted by REF Northall. You're all welcome to attend. Don't worry, there'll be further details in a minute about how you can, how you can get involved. We're always keen to have new participants come along. Um, it's not a case that if you missed the first meeting in 2018, you've missed the boat. We start every meeting um, by welcoming all of our new participants and reminding everyone of why it is that we're there and what it is we're seeking to do uh, in the hope that new people who come along are always, always feel like they are welcome and that they're, they're not sort of jumping into something that's, that's midway through its, its lifespan. 
We're looking to, to continue gathering and sharing good practice. Like I said, we are now um, making a very big effort to, to kickstart every, every meeting and every event we have with, uh, with some, new, some new examples of good practice from our participants that we can share across London and with other London hubs across the country. We're going to talk a lot more about the Service People Premium. Uh, after sharing the, the data on the Service People Premium, We've had quite a few questions um, from Hub members about how it should be used most effectively, um, particularly given that, um, although as we saw on that slide, there are a few London boroughs with large numbers of service children, the majority are spread quite thinly um, across a large number of London boroughs. So that's a different kind of challenge for people when using the service people premium. So we'll be looking at that a bit more. We recognise that for a lot of education practitioners, um, talking about the Armed Forces Covenant can sometimes be, uh, be a bit confusing for them. It's not something they're necessarily aware of. So we're working to promote uh, Armed Forces Covenant e-learning and other resources amongst the participants of our London Hub so that um, everyone that takes part will be aware of the Armed Forces Covenant and what it means in, in practice. And we're hoping that that will help them support their service families and service children a little bit better. We're going to be um, promoting the sort of new development that was announced last year that um, on the uh, UCAS application forms, application forms children have to fill out when they're applying for university, um, starting this year, I think that's right, there will be a question uh, on there asking applicants, uh, first of all, if they've ever served in the armed forces, um, but also a question asking uh, applicants if they are the child of anyone who's ever served in the armed forces. Um, and that, that stems out of the work that the Office of Students have done to, to identify service children as being um, a group of, of children that are, are deserving of extra outreach work. So we're going to work to promote that amongst our members and make sure that people know what that's about and why that question's going in there. We're also going to work with uh, the universities that are a member of the London Hub to, to try and promote the Armed Forces Covenant across London universities a little bit better. Um, some of us were a little surprised, I think, when we heard that... Um, well, the last I heard, the number was only three universities in London had, uh, had signed the Armed Forces Covenant, and there are something like well over 50 universities and higher education institutions um, spread across the city. So we're... Uh, three are. Pardon me? Can you name the three? Uh, yes, I think I can. Um, if you, I, think, I think the three, I think there's Brunel University, South Bank University, and London Met, I think. Thank you. <laughs> On the spot there, yeah. So yes, yeah, so there's a lot of other universities in London that we're, that we're hoping we can work with to encourage them to, uh, to engage with that, with that work. Uh, and also, um, we're working with uh, King's College London, who have started to study uh, the well-being of women, um, which is looking at armed forces, uh, women in armed forces families um, during and after pregnancy and the support that they receive and some of the challenges they face. So we're going to be working with them to promote that study uh, across our members. So some things for you to, to all take away and, and hopefully act on. Please follow the Skip Alliance on Twitter and have a look at the website. Um, details all up there. If you would like to find out more about the work of the London Hub specifically, and if you would like to attend the next meeting that we have set on the 19th of June, please contact uh, either me on my email address up there or email the the generic Skip London uh, email address up there. We've set up our own email address that's shared between the Royal British Legion and King's College London. Uh, and please, also, if you have any further questions about the Skip Alliance, you've got Kath's email address up there as well. And I think we're, we're taking questions in the panel session at the end. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you've got any questions, please write them down, uh, and we'll be sticking around at the end to answer, uh, to answer questions or grab us in the coffee break or over lunch. Thank you very much.